Hitman 3 came along in January to show us what a bald man can really do when he puts his mind to it, which is mainly putting unconscious people into wardrobes and throwing hammers at service staff. Little Nightmares is like a breath of horrifying fresh air. It's like a dog fart in a tent, if you were, if you were into that. I'll tell you something though, and I don't want to spoil it, but about halfway through, someone puts a jacket on and then you realise that the game's a prequel. Not the first time someone's put their jacket on and then moved in a backwards motion away from me. The scariest part of Resident Evil 8 has to be when you're chased by Silent Hill's answer to Mr Blobby. And while it is a very, very good bit, for me, a little bit of a busman's holiday. And I've been advised legally not to explain that joke. But you'll love it, I'm sure. The only thing dread inducing about Metroid Dread was that at some point I knew it would have to end. Aww. Oh, wait, that and the awful story. But look, this is Nintendo at their very best yet again. This game has lightning fast pace, almost perfect combat. I tell you something, I judge you more these days if you tell me you don't own a Switch than I do if you tell me you're unvaccinated. So, I mean, if you're not carrying a Switch, I want to see your exemption card. Get it, get it out, get it, get it, let me see it, let me see it. Fucking liar. Deathloop is a great re-game, right? A completely unique experience, which is so rare these days. But there's something about Arkane's games, right? That whenever I finish them, I just, I kind of struggle to remember anything. All I'm saying is, don't leave these developers around your drink, because if they can make me forget eight to 10 hours of gameplay, then fuck, fucking fuck knows what else they can make me forget. Spider-Man came to Marvel's Avengers in November and it was very sadly triggering for him because the last time he tried to save something this close to death, it was Gwen Stacy. You know, VR is incredibly immersive, almost too immersive, because you see, I thought I'd bought myself an Oculus Quest 2 and a copy of Resident Evil 4 VR, but what I'd done instead is actually bought a plane ticket to a remote Spanish village, where I just went about shooting all of those villagers in their shins and pushing all their furniture up against the windows. <laughs> oh my god, what a gift this is though, to be able to re-experience one of the greatest games of all time in a way which makes it feel completely fresh and new. And yeah, all right, you need a Facebook login to get your Oculus Quest to work, but to be honest, there's some things worth sacrificing your human rights for. And with San Andreas VR coming to the Oculus Quest soon, oh, honestly, they could tell me the only way to play that would be to get into Guantanamo, and I'd be like, guys, I did 9-11. I, I was me, I was me. Where's my jumpsuit? Can I come in? What, uh, look, can I get a shot? When can I get a shot? How many people are in front of me to, to play? The six? Fuck. So there you go, some of my favourite games of last year while we're well into 2022. What a waste of time. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, you can check out some, some older videos if you like. And uh, I'll see you again in, I don't know, like seven months time, whenever I can be asked doing another one of these. Bye.